This is Faith Encouraged with Father Barnabas Powell. Homilies designed to help you live a purposeful and faith-filled life in Jesus Christ. Here's Father Barnabas. Have you ever had to give somebody bad news? Yeah, me too. Have you ever had to be the recipient of bad news? Yeah. I confess to you, sometimes I read the Gospels and I, I see it how Jesus does what he does, and I kind of scratch my head. Lord, didn't you take the class on how to win friends and influence people? Lord, didn't you, uh, haven't you gone to the Dale Carnegie School and, and learn about how to speak publicly and, and, and to, to move your audience? And yet our Lord Jesus seems to be able to cut through what is too many times in our own life and in our own culture, the comfort that we have with delusion, the comfort that we have with that which makes us feel good, the comfort that we have with that which, do I dare say it, feeds my ego. Now, I will confess to you, one of the things that drew me to orthodoxy was the challenge that we had in overcoming my ego. The power that I struggled with with my own ego, with my own difficulties in my life, and getting over my own expectations of how the world was supposed to treat me. I was shocked and I was amazed when I found out that somebody didn't like me. That's how egotistical that I was. Shall I change that, that that's how egotistical I am? Ouch. But it shocked me that someone would disagree with me or not see clearly exactly what I was trying to say. And it was only when my spiritual father spoke to me very plainly and said, Barnabas, You've got to get over yourself, man. You've got to get over yourself. Or you will never... Gang, if you get this this morning, you're going to go home with the key to unlocking how to pay attention to God for the rest of your life. If you miss this this morning, you're going to go home and still struggle with tripping up over your own delusions and your own self-ability to keep yourself in the dark. Get this and you're going to be okay. Don't get this and you're still going to be deaf to God's voice. Do I have your attention? There are times in my life when I have to be spoken to plainly to break through the temptation of self-delusion that I suffer from every day. I never will forget my football coach pulling me off to the side I don't know, you, those of you who've ever played football, you may be able to relate to this. But I was, we were in practice, and we were practicing with, with, full, uh, with full gear. And he grabbed me by the face mask, and he pulled me to him and said, Powell, you better get your head in the game, boy. Well, man, that sudden attention got my attention completely. I was able to finally stop all of the temptations to be distracted by other thoughts and, and being distracted by other things so that I could finally focus on the task at hand. In our gospel lesson today, our Lord Jesus Christ does the same thing for the disciples. He also does the same thing for the father of this precious boy who needed to be healed. He also does the same thing for you and I today. The disciples couldn't heal this boy. Jesus had, as he, as he often did, went off by himself to pray. By the way, folks, if you ever want to be able to, to sensitize yourself to the Spirit of God, to the presence of God, to the value of your faith, make sure you carve out in your busy life times of alone with God and being quiet before God. If you don't do that, trust me, the noise of modern life will drown out the voice of God in your heart. Every time, without exception, your own busyness, your own schedule will become your enemy to your spiritual life. And trust me, brothers and sisters, when you come to the end of your life, 
God is not going to ask to look at your day planner. God is not going to wonder, oh, I understand that you couldn't uh, do this uh, in my kingdom because you had this business meeting or you had that thing that you had to do. And see, every one of the things that you're working on right now that you think are so important and so vital are one day going to be completely irrelevant in the light of eternity. So staying awake to the voice of God is absolutely essential for you to be the man or woman that God has called you to be. Your priorities reveal who you really are, folks. You'll never escape it. So our Lord Jesus speaks plainly to this crowd. They bring the, the boy to Jesus, and Jesus says, Jesus doesn't say, oh, wonderful, let me, let me put my arms around this precious boy and heal him. No. Jesus does something completely, it seems like, out of character. Jesus says, how long am I going to put up with you people? How long am I supposed to endure you? Now, do you think the Lord said that because he was exasperated or angry or upset? No. Jesus Christ was trying to do for these people what he's trying to do for you this morning. To wake you up so that you can hear good news and bad news. So that you will finally pay attention to what needs to happen in your life and in my life to apply this 20 centuries of wisdom that is preserved in our precious church to make you the man or the woman that God has called you to be. God wants to wake you up. Because if you stay asleep, you're not going to be the man or the woman that God has called you to be. If you stay asleep, if you stay locked in the slumber of your busyness and of priorities that do not reflect your understanding that, number one, you're going to die, and number two, you are going to stand before the awesome judgment seat of Christ. Those two realities are true for each of us today. So what does Jesus do? Jesus says, how long am I going to put up with you? How long am I going to endure you? Bring the boy to me. <clears throat> and then, of course, the Lord heals him. And Jesus gets another chance to spend time with his disciples after this happened because they're upset. They're upset. Lord, why couldn't we heal this boy? And Jesus, you, you see, gang, <clears throat> let me say this real quick. You would expect that people who were constantly traveling with Jesus every day, every waking moment of the day they're with the Lord, you'd, you'd expect them to be awake. But let me tell you something, and, and I hope I don't scandalize anybody, but even we priests can be so busy doing things for God that we forget to be with God. We can get so busy doing religious things that we forget to tend to our own soul. When you see a priest crash and burn, it's usually because he forgot that principle. So here are the disciples who are with the Lord night and day. They're traveling with Jesus every day. You'd think those boys would really get it. And just to show you how... I don't want to say stupid. That would be wrong. And it wouldn't be politically correct. But just to show you how slow to catch on these boys are, and here we are in our own stage, how, how slow are we to catch on? Jesus looks at them and says, this only comes by prayer and fasting. What does that mean? Well, brothers and sisters, you know the, orthodox, the three basic orthodox principles and, disi and disciplines of the Christian life, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Those are the three basic disciplines that for 20 centuries has shaped men to be like God. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Jesus tells them, boys, you're never going to be able to put your spiritual life on automatic pilot. You're never not going to be able to, to uh, ignore the basic principles of the Christian faith. You're not going to be able to do that, ever. You're going to have to stay awake and pay attention moment by moment to the basic disciplines of the Orthodox Christian faith. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Why couldn't you do this? Because you hadn't put, you had forgotten. You thought you had power in yourself. You thought you'd finally learned enough to graduate from the kindergarten of basic spiritual principles. And you haven't. You've got to keep the basics done. Again, my football coach. Boys, we're going to run this play 
till you know it backwards and forwards. If you forget basic principles, how to tackle, how to block, you're going to lose the game. And it is what Jesus Christ says to his disciples today. Prayer and fasting is the way these things are going to happen. And then after the Lord had finally woken these disciples up, Jesus Christ drops a bombshell. The Lord Jesus says to his disciples, Fellas, when we get to Jerusalem, they're going to arrest me. When they arrest me, they're going to kill me. But I'll rise again from the dead. You see, ladies and gentlemen, your modern life will catch you by surprise if you don't stay awake. Your modern life will let bad news destroy you and good news lull you to sleep if you don't pay attention to the basic principles of being a practical and professing and practicing Orthodox Christian. You're going to miss the opportunity to survive the bad times and pass through the good times with sobriety and joy if you forget the basic principles of the Christian faith so that when bad news comes, you're going to be knocked down on your, on your, on your rear end. When good news comes, you're going to be deluded into believing, oh, it's always going to be great. But the reality is, it's always going to be, real life is always going to have good times and bad times. And your spiritual life is the foundation that sets you up to succeed no matter what life throws at you. If you miss that foundation, my angels, you will be captured and destroyed by life. The bad times will knock you down and you'll stay down. The good times will fool you into believing that there'll never be another bad time. But the basic practices of the faith are meant to teach you how to be resilient no matter what life throws at you. This morning, in this place, every spiritual treasure a human could ever need is deposited right at your feet. In, the, in a moment, we'll take the Eucharist. We'll hear the prayers that have been prayed for 20 centuries. We will participate in the consistently successful pattern of spiritual and Christian life that shapes men and women to be heroes for God. We've been doing it for 20 centuries. We've picked up on a few things. It may be good for you to pay attention. But if you can arouse your soul this morning and wake up to the treasure that has been dropped in your lap today, you'll be ready for whatever life comes, whatever life throws at you and you'll be at peace. This morning, would you like that? Would you like that to be true in your life? All you need is right here. Amen. Father Barnabas is the priest at the Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene Greek Orthodox Church in Cumming, Georgia. Find out more at faithencouraged.org. That's faithencouraged.org.